So today I want to round up some of the best PC hardware that I came to review in 2019. And for a bit of a twist, we're going to make this specific to ITX and small form factor builds. It's no doubt that a lot of this channel revolves around the focus for high performance small form factor PCs, how to optimize them, make them run cooler and so on. And small form factor PCs are definitely becoming a lot more popular as time goes on and processes are becoming more efficient. Storage is becoming a lot more denser and more affordable and uh, multi-GPU gaming systems are pretty much dead for now in terms of support. Now, for hardware to be featured on this list, it doesn't need to be released this year. It just needs to be sort of featured in a review this year or at least still be relevant or the best performing in its category. So without further ado, let's get started. So let's start with some of the best low profile CPU coolers that you can currently build with at different sizes. And let's start with the smallest of the bunch. If you do have a super tiny build, your best bet is the Noctua NHL9. With a height of just 37 millimeters, if you're building in a case like the Velka 3, the Skyreach 4 Mini or something else super slim, this is easily your best choice. It's also now available in a completely blacked out Chromax variant, which is nice and stealthy. And of course, for both Intel and AMD, sockets. Stepping things up, let's say you have 47 millimeters of clearance to play with for your build. Your best choice here is the Alpenphone Blackridge. Developed by the creator of the Den A4 SFX, this is one of the densest heat sinks that I've ever seen, which is one of the main reasons why it performs so well. A word of warning though, you won't be able to mount this on every single motherboard. You might have clearance issues when it comes to the IO shroud or heat sinks. So in that case, you might also want to check out the Cryorig C7G, which also also has some pretty respectable performance. But if you have up to 70 mils of clearance to play with, your best bet there is the Noctua NHL-12S. And for those who didn't know, you can also bend the heat pipes here just a little to make this cooler fit inside the Ghost S1 for some pretty unreal cooling performance. And I will give a special mention to the Acer Tech 645 LT, which is a very well-built 92 mil liquid AIO. Although there aren't many cases that you'd want to use this in, the ones that you can, like the Dan a 4 s effects, this setup works incredibly well. All right, but now let's take a look at the best ITX motherboards on the market right now. And what better way to start than by looking first at the best AMD Ryzen ITX motherboards. So kicking things off first with the best B450 ITX motherboards. And here there are two pretty decent choices. The Asus B450i Strix would be my first personal preference. It's got a six plus one phase VRM with 40 amp smart power stages, three four pin fan headers, and a really clean design. Second preference for B450 ITX would be MSI's Gaming Plus AC. Slightly stronger VRM than the Strix with 50 amp power stages in a 6 plus 2 configuration, but only two 4 pin headers, red accents which I'm not really a fan of, and I do prefer the BIOS on the ASUS ROG boards. But if you do want to comfortably overclock something like the Ryzen 3900X or 3950X in heavy sustained workloads and potentially overclock them too, you'll probably want to look at an X570 board instead. My top pick here is the ASUS X570i Strix, which also has an identical VRM to the much more expensive Crosshair 8 Impact, which ran more than fine with an overclocked 16 core 3950X. So here you're getting a 4 plus 2 phase VRM, but with 70 amp smart power stages, which is pretty insane, not to mention active chipset and VRM cooling. Overall, just a really solid ITX board for enthusiast Ryzen builds. For those sticking with Intel builds though, my top pick for a Z3 90 ITX board there is ASRock's Phantom Gaming AC. You're getting a 5 plus 2 phase VRM here, which will run plenty cool with 60 amp smart power stages underneath a properly designed heatsink. You can also expect pretty decent M.2 drive thermals here, along with the convenience of a clear CMOS button on the rear IO. I ran this board in my main system with an overclocked 9900K for quite a while, and it does deserve the top spot on this list. The ASUS Z390 Strix is a strong runner up does have a 6 plus 2 phase VRM. The board looks a lot more attractive too, but it's only using 45 amp power stages and M.2 drive cooling isn't going to be as good. Still though, both are really great options. 
Next up, often a boring and overlooked category for your build, and that's the power supply. There is one series of power supplies that I always find myself recommending and purchasing for ITX builds, and that's Corsair's Platinum series that are available in 450 watts, 600 watts, and even 750 watt models. The reason that these get my first recommendation is that they come with a set of pre-sleeved cables that not only look great, but make cable management an absolute breeze in compact builds. You can also buy this set of sleeved cables separately for around $35 if you do currently have one of the regular SF series power supplies with the standard cable set. Now when it comes to optimizing your ITX builds airflow and noise levels you just can't look past Noctua fans. Their 120mm NFA 12 by 25 has been instrumental in bringing the noise levels down in pretty much any compact build that I can use it in. These fans are also perfect for 240mm and 120mm radiators due to their strong static pressure performance. You also can't look past their other fan models. Their slim A12x15 is one that I use a lot and can also be adapted to coolers quite easily. And then you also have the very popular and quiet 92mm models, both in a standard and slim variant. These fans can add quite a bit of extra airflow to your build, for example, some extra cooling for your motherboard's VRM or CPU cooler without the extra associated noise and whine that you usually get with these smaller fans. Again, these are highly recommended for coolers as well, adapting the NFA 9x14 to the Alpenphone Blackridge, for example, will yield both a significant thermal and noise reduction. Now, graphics cards are a whole different topic of discussion, but I want to quickly mention a few graphics card models and cooler designs that are found to work quite well in small form factor builds. Starting with the most powerful ITX card model, that's with a length of under 175 millimeters, and that's MSI's RTX 2070 Aero ITX. To have this much power contained in such a tiny form factor is pretty insane, but it does work quite well too in terms of thermals and noise. I've used this card in builds with the 4 litre Velka 3 and the 5 litre Skyreach 4 Mini, both ridiculously tiny builds that you can easily fit in a backpack, and thermals and noise levels there were definitely okay. If you're looking for a GPU for a tiny LAN rig for example, this is what I'd recommend. If you want more power though, you'll definitely want to bump it up to a 2 slot card, so if you're looking at something like an RTX 2070 Super or higher, and Nvidia's Founders Edition cards are some of the best open air two slot coolers that you can currently get, but they are quite hard to come by in terms of availability. But EVGA's XC gaming cards are one model that I've recently become a big fan of. The reason for that is that when looking at an RTX 2080 Super or 2080 Ti option, usually graphics card vendors will reserve these two slot models to the more affordable budget oriented category, but it's good to see EVGA still implementing a premium cooler design in a compact form factor. And on AMD side of things, despite making excellent GPUs like the RX 5700 and 5700 XT, it absolutely kills me to see no graphics card vendor take this GPU and PCB and actually make a compact cooler design. We recently had a look at the 5700 XT PowerColor Red Dragon, a two slot 240mm card, but even that has some limitations when it comes to height. So really recommendations here are going to be on a case by case basis. Now this year saw my first first completely liquid cooled small form factor build and in that process I found some water cooling hardware that just made that build so much easier. The first is AlphaCool's Solo LT CPU pump lock which is both an excellent CPU water block and a quiet but powerful pump to run your entire custom loop. I tested this against the Apogee Drive 2 from Swift Tech which uses a much more powerful DDC pump but I found no difference between them in system thermals. So if you're running a single 240 or 280 80 mm radiator in your compact custom loop, then AlphaCool's Solo LT gets a strong recommendation. I'll definitely be using this in the future. And I realize that I might sound like a bit of an AlphaCool fanboy, and I'm totally okay with that, but their 240 mm Nexus radiator was seriously a lifesaver when it came to filling and draining my custom loop. By simply having the fitting ports on both sides of the radiator, you can easily repurpose this as a fill and drain port, saving you time, hassle, and also space in your system. AlphaCool also make the best quick disconnect fittings on the market. These two can easily be used to fill and drain your system without a discrete reservoir. Now on the enthusiast train of thought, if you are building an Intel system based around the 9900K or 9900KS, it might be worth considering direct die cooling. I dropped over 15 degrees C on an overclocked 9900K with direct die cooling. You can easily delid the CPU with Derbauer's delid die meat too, and then use a direct die mounting kit with liquid 
liquid metal. Of course, this will void your warranty though, and it is only recommended for experienced builders. And for those who didn't notice, M.2 NVMe drives are becoming insanely cheap these days. You can grab a one terabyte NVMe drive for $100 US, 500 gigabyte drives for around $50, potentially making larger two and a half inch drives somewhat redundant. For my next build, I'm definitely going with all NVMe. Also, this year Corsair brought out their 32 gigabyte high density memory modules. So now it's a lot more accessible to build an ITX system with 64 gigabytes of RAM. And to close this video off, I will say that I will leave some links down below to some more affordable and accessible uh, ITX case offerings. That's something that you guys have been asking me to do for a while. So if you are in the market for a new ITX case that is, you know, doesn't suck, but you can actually buy it at an affordable price. I will leave that linked down below as well as all the other parts that we've discussed here today in this video. As always guys, a huge thanks for watching. Consider subscribing down below if you haven't already, and I'll see you all in the next one.